What is going on guys and welcome back to the Young and Intelligent Money Investing channel. Today we are talking about ETFs to buy in February 2018 and beyond. Before we get into that, I just want to ask you guys to please drop a like on this video if you find it useful. Leave a comment telling me what your favorite ETFs are for this year. Alright, let's get into this. So, number one is going to be VOO. Now VOO is a Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. And what an ETF is, if you guys just don't know really quick, it's like a basket of stocks. This one's going to be the exact S&P 500 index. It's going to perform just about the same, and it's put on by Vanguard. So VOO has, so far this in the last year, has gone up 27%, which in a half percent, which is just absolutely insane. Five-year return, 111%. Three months, the last three months have been absolutely crazy for the market, yeah, and as I'm sure you guys know if you're on this video. But 12% in the last three months, which has been a great return. I am up 17.84% on VOO and have collected a few dividends along the way, uh, as you guys can see right here. So, two, a couple great things about VOO is it is really that performance and also and one of the other things I love is that that expense ratio the first two we're going to talk about have really low expense ratios the other two are a little bit higher but you'll see why I like them in a second so the 0.04 percent expense ratio that's one of the lowest you are going to find that is for every $100 you have invested you only have to pay four pennies per year in order to hold that ETF which is a great price. A lot of them are going to be way higher, especially if you're considering when you have like a mutual fund or a hedge fund, those are going to average over a percent expense ratio per year. And you don't want to give a percent of your total capital to some hedge funder uh, every single year. That's just absolutely ridiculous. 0.04%, much more reasonable, much more manageable, and VOL gives some fantastic returns. It also pays out quarterly uh, for in terms of its dividend yield. Number two is going to be VYM, another Vanguard ETF here. This one's the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. Let's look at its return for it recently. Over the last one year, 22.6% return. Over the last five years, 102.5% return. That return's a little bit lower, but it also has a little bit higher percent dividend yield than VOO. I'm up 2.5% I'm up on this position, but I've only had it for about a week and a half now. So I'm really excited about this. I plan to add big time to VYM over the next year and for a many like a long time to come. As we were talking about, this one has a 2.88% 2 .8 dividend yield, which is fantastic. Really about a percent above the S&P 500 return. So if you're a dividend investor, this one's great for you. And another thing about VYM is that even though it is a high dividend yield ETF, it stays away from real estate, the whole real estate sector. So you're not going to have any real estate stocks in, in VYM, which is really nice, especially right now because of our rising rates environments. It's really hard. It's a lot harder for those real estate investment trusts to expand as far, as far because they have to spend more money on the interest for their loans. So with VYM, you don't have to deal with that, and that's one of the issues that our, the next one we're talking about is having uh, in terms of its return over the long run. So I really like VYM, probably my favorite on the, on this list. VYM, VYO, VOO, great Vanguard ETFs. Those are my two favorite Vanguard ETFs, so I definitely suggest you guys get into those for the long term. Let's talk about this next one, SPHD. Now, SPHD is put on by SPDR, S&P 500, high dividend, low volatility ETF. So with this one, takes the... I can't remember the 75 high, highest dividend yielding ET, uh, securities in the S&P 500, 75 highest yielders, and then takes the 50 least volatile of those, and then that is what the ETF consists of. So this one has a much higher dividend yield because it does include those real estate investment trusts, and that's what drags that up. So it has a 3.8% yield, which is 3.87% yield, which is absolutely fantastic almost double about double what the S&P 500 gives right now but the one problem with this is that it has a 0.3 percent expense ratio now that's a lot bigger than the other ones that we were talking about but if you are looking for monthly income that's kind of like the price the price you have to pay it's really hard to get these monthly dividend ETFs there's not too many of them largely due to the amount that they pay out largely due to kind of the resources it takes to pay out on a monthly basis so they do charge that a little bit higher expense ratio 
but I have enjoyed getting these monthly dividends every single month since I've owned it, and I've really brought up my position every month, and it's kind of been a growing reinvestment, and it's been a really, really nice for me to have so far. Now, that monthly payout is pretty much the reason I got an SPHD to begin with, and I've kind of wanted to stick with that so from there. I've got it's one of my larger positions. I'm only up 7.5% on it, but that does not include my my uh, my dividends. So that that's something to take into account when you're looking at SPHD. You do give up some of that potential to go up, but really the dividend is a big, big benefit of having it. It's up 98% in the last five years, which is really, really strong. In the last one year, only up 11.2, 11.8%, which isn't great, but as we know, the market goes through cycles. Right now, real estate's not doing too hot, and that's one of the big things in SPHD, so it's going to be a little bit down for now. I expect it to rebound in the long run. So I'm, I'm holding SPHD for the long run, and I would definitely suggest you have that in any sort of income portfolio, largely due to that monthly dividend. Now, we have one more monthly dividend payer, another SPDR stock ETF here, is going to be DIA. This is one of the most popular Dow Jones Industrial Average ETFs, and as you guys know, that's just going to follow the Dow. I'm up 24.5% on this. The Dow has been absolutely crushing it this year, up 35.5% in the last year, in the last five years, about 115%. Last three months up 14.5%. This has been absolutely crushing it lately. And what a lot of people don't know about DIA is that it does have that monthly dividend. Well, this this one's a little bit less consistent than SPHD in terms of the value you get back. That's largely going to be, be because these ETFs that or these stocks that it holds don't pay out on a monthly basis as much as the ones that SPHD holds. So it doesn't have that same consistency, but that's really all right. It comes through cycles. You're still getting a payout every month. It's just not quite as predictable. It's never really going to be with ETFs. It kind of varies month to month just because of it, all the basket of securities behind it. You don't know exactly what you're going to get every month with all the big combinations and different times companies are paying out to the shareholders. And that's really what the ETFs are. They're really like big shareholders, institutional shareholders. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and it has given you something to think about for ETFs to buy this month, February, and also the rest of 2018 and beyond. Really, I think these are going to perform very well in the long run, so I definitely wouldn't fret holding any of these in the long term. You're definitely not going to lose any sleep over these, which is a great thing and one of my personal philosophies while investing. Let's give a quick update on the portfolio. I am now up at 17% about. One of my big contributors right now is Advi. I'm up 14% about on this stock just today off a good earnings report. Up 86% overall. Easily my best return for a stock. And that's just been great for me to see. Really exciting stock and it has even more growth potential in the future, I bet. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below if you have not already. Let's try and get this video to 15 likes. And also subscribe if you haven't already. We are... Most of our viewers come from non-subscribers, so I would like you guys to just try it out. Hit that subscribe button and just unsubscribe if you don't if you don't enjoy the content. It's easy as that. It won't hurt my feelings. Just want you guys to give the channel a try. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.